Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and please excuse if I have a slightly croaky throat. Right, today we are going to do and make this but I also got a little bit busy yesterday and I made a couple of things all on my own so I'm going to share those projects now and then I'm just going to share what it is that we're going to make in a second. Right, so I've already used the... Um, pumpkin face stamps I've used that huge set of pumpkins I've used one of the words I've used some of the ghost sequins that come in this pack I've used the batty bow and I've also used the beach house right so that's what I got up to and used last night I'm just going to move those out of the way there we go, make some space. Right, first up, the pumpkins. And they are absolutely gorgeous. If my camera is fluorescing, I do apologise. But um, it tends not to like bright colours. So these are some of the cute little pumpkins. And I did use some in my project. So you can see how small and how large they are. So this one I think is the widest and I think that one is the tallest. So I'm just going to start by measuring those. And all I did was use orange cardstock, that's three inches, and um, some black Distress Oxide just to give them a little bit of fun shadow. The pumpkin itself is two and a half and then with the stem it's three and an eighth. So you can sort of like roughly see the size of those pumpkins. Now there's two missing and those are the ones that I put on my beach hut. And you know me, I like to think that things can be used all year round. And so I think my pumpkins are turning grey on camera. <laughs> um, that's how I did my beach hut. Now that is actually vivid, bright green, limey green glitter. And it's just not showing true at all. So let's start at the top. That's where I put the batty bow. We have a close-up of that. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is so sweet. If you cut that in fouls and put it on a little clip, it's just going to look so sweet in, in the hair of a little girl for Halloween. Really lovely. Or even a rubber band so you can do it in a ponytail. There are, I'm trying to get focus here, the... Um, ghost sequins yeah my brain went dead for a minute the ghost sequins and I used five of those and you can see how many I've got left so you can cut out lots and lots I kept the little mouths in and just put a drop of glue in the middle to make sure the mouth didn't pop out there is one of the words treats which is an awesome size and then two of the smaller pumpkins from this set I put at the bottom so if you go and you have a look at KS Crafts website it's done in really pretty pastel you know sort of beach hut shades but I like to know that you can use it all the time and it's going to look great with gingerbread so you know change up the color scheme again do it in craft and white and then just a little red heart in the door and you can have all your little gingerbreads and what have you going on decorate the roof up with your um oh your little candy cane embellishments and stuff like that and you've got a great seasonal house and if you leave the door off it you can just have it as a birdhouse and just pop your little bird there, your cute bird in the middle. But I just think it's gorgeous because it's so versatile and uh, I just had to use it. Right, so if we go to the top of the house, it is five inches. So it could be a brilliant little easel card as well. And then the house kind of tapers outwards. So I'm going to say at its biggest taper point, it's three inches and then with the roof on, as I've done it, four inches wide. So five by four, you know, that's a great card size. So that is the little beach house. And you can see, I put loads of stuff on there. So you've got the words, you've got the house, you've got the pumpkins, you've got the ghosts, and you've got the bow. So that's how I managed to use up so many of those dies yesterday. But today, reaching across my desk here, we are going to do this 
Halloween cat and it's a mug so it's a Halloween cat mug and it's quite vintage so I'm going to kind of stick with that there's a few things I'm going to change I'm going to change the pupils out and I'm going to use stars for the pupils I don't know if I'm going to use the bigger ones or the smaller ones yet but I just thought that would look quite sweet there and then cardstock I'm using is uh, black and orange and also snack click supply so from a haunted pack there it's kind of like I'm using that as a background and that's lots of little words. I'm going to use a sheet of black card stock and I'm just going under my table. There we go. <laughs> I dropped it on the floor. It's a long way down under there, I can tell you. Orange and I don't know if I pick it up in a different light, but it's a lovely, bright, vivid orange and this vintage frame comes in the same pack and it's all stained up and stuff so I'm going to fussy cut that out and fussy cut that bit out of the middle and this pumpkin and I thought as I'm doing a shaker if you look at the die here on its own it's got this beautiful embossing um, of a pumpkin but when you apply your layers which is that one and then put your shaker layer on top you can also cut your acetate with that. There is a chance that if you do it that way, you're going to lose um, that lovely embossing. Obviously, if you don't use that, and you just cut it in black and then just go to your shaker piece, then you're going to see it. But because I'm doing it that way around and using that piece to cut the acetate, I figured that I'm going to be able to get that pumpkin face there into my cat's body and it's going to look like it's really got a pumpkin down there if you know what I mean so that's what I'm going to get up to and I'm going to be back in a minute so we're just going to chop this apart and if you don't know how to do that you know I'll just do a couple very quickly here just get your little snips and pull it off always pull away from the cut edge don't cut up to the cut edge or twist in that way otherwise you'll be left with a little sharp point that could dingy paper so I go underneath and cut really close can you see that so that you get rid of that and if you were going to bend because you've got no snips hold your die and push it back on itself so that you're not getting any sharp bit that's going to interfere with your paper you've got another bit there which is a nice little chunk so I'm going to cut that off whoops there you go just twist and pull really easy and then you've got another one here when you do stuff like this you don't if you've got a full craft room like me you don't just want to go willy-nilly snip you need to hold your pieces because if they go flying off in all directions you're likely never to find them again I mean that could end up in a basket of washi tape or anything you know and I probably wouldn't see it until I decided to use washi tape so now you've got these two sharp pieces and you just want to go in close with these snips pinch and pull take that off so that you've got nothing that's going to you know stick in you remember to keep those pieces you don't want them on the floor um especially with some of my dogs you know I don't want them in their paws so that's how easy it is to do that right I'm going to go off and cut and let's put that card together back in a minute okay so I've been off and done some die cutting and these are my shaker pieces so I've got my acetate I've done a frame in orange I've cut a little foam frame and this is how this will go your acetate will go to your frame and then your paper cut frame um, basically goes on and covers your foam that then is stuck to your base which is where you're going to put all of your um, sequins and stuff and the ones that I'm choosing to use today are I hope that's showing um, I'm going to use some of my black stars and some of my orange circles I have got all sorts of purpley green beads and things there but I think I'm just going to stick with those two right what else have I got yes I've cut the black cat base and as you can see you've got that lovely emboss but I'm covering it up with my base which is going to be the pumpkin inside of the tummy there let's uh, wiggle that around so I can make this bit up separate and then it's got a little collar which is very uh, vintage 
and that's going to go on there. Now I've done a little orange piece which is going to go inside there and because I'm popping this up on foams I will actually put um, a couple of foam pads behind there to hold that in and then for my eyes I cut out a couple of stars. I cut out that one because I wasn't sure but I think I prefer the larger stars um, to have as the pupil of the eyes. So first of all I'm moving these out of the way. We are going to do the shake a bit first but I haven't shown you the frames yet so I'm going to have a black base for my card and then we're going to use the um, the spooky and jack-o-lantern and all kinds of stuff is printed on that and then I've um, used a craft knife to cut that out and that's how that's going to go but I do want to put some distress ink around uh, before I glue all that together and I'm just using whatever is left on here just to go around the edge so I'm going to do this and just stick my base together and come back right so I've completed doing the base and you can see I just put distress ink on the inside where I'd cut and also on the outside and it's not even it's a kind of slightly wibbly wobbly frame so you're not going to see it sort of at an accurate um, you know distance from the borders of your cardstock there but it's quite large um, it's about six and a half by uh, four and a half so it's a good sized card and as I said pops up on foams so just make sure all your foam pads are stuck down right so that is the base and now we're going to do the shaker right this is the shaker these are all of the bits that you need that is the bottom of my shaker and this is the foam frame now this one goes on next and I'm hoping uh, I'm going to get glue out of my bottle. Now if you want to use double sided adhesive tape when you're cutting things like this you can. I tend not to because you end up with a huge waste of the adhesive tape on an inny um, that you know you rarely use so I just kind of stick with my Dollar Tree glue and that is cut to fit the base so just going to pick that up and make sure that I've got that on accurately. So I've got my little pumpkin face inside my cat's body. Now that is still wet which is why I'm going to put my sprinkles in there but I'm going to keep them in the centre. So I don't want to put too much in. So just a few of my orange ones there and I'm going to spread them around without getting them stuck in any glue that may have oozed from the edges so that's kind of like enough for me and then I'm just gonna unscrew I've already got the top off that one you see and then these stars in here are absolutely gorgeous you get these um, most years from Dollar Tree and they last such a long time I mean you get big ones like that which I don't really want to put in here I want to try and get to the bottom and and get the small ones like there's a little tiny one that's stuck on my finger I should have put a sheet of paper down there we go so just a few in there and I've got a medium sized one I don't really want to hide that pumpkin face so I'm just going to mooch down in the bottom of my pot. I'm tipping it towards me so I can see. And a few more tiny little black ones there. Oh, and I had one stuck on my finger and one stuck on my nail. So those can go in there. And that's enough for me. Right, so I'm now screwing my pots together. I can tell you I have before done this and forgotten to screw just pick them up towards me and just shard myself in sequins which is fine because I don't mind walking on them <laughs> right next up you've got all your sequins out of the way I've just found another one pop that in there and you want a little bit of glue just on the edge now if you put too much on it can squidge 
So if you find, like I've just done there, that you've got too much, just use your finger, hold your shaker steady, and just spread that along. And then you'll get less of a squish when you put your uh, acetate down. Put my finger in it again. There we go. And now I'm just going to grab my acetate. Make sure you've got it the correct way around because you can actually feel it with your finger. You usually get a kind of like slightly rough edge and then you get a smooth edge. So I'm just going to slot that up. So now it's got its shiny little lid on there. And if your acetate hangs out a bit, it doesn't matter. I just don't worry about stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's it's handmade. So just a tiny bit on the orange frame. Got my fingers in it, but that doesn't matter. And then we're going to position this on top of that. Now, because everything's still wet, there is a possibility of things sliding around. So I just gently kind of tease stuff with my fingernail until I think I've got it where I want. Like here, you probably can't see that, but I've got a white edge that I don't need. Right, so while everything else is being put together now, I can put my shaker over there to dry. All of my shaky bits are in the middle, so they're not going to be like stuck down inside of the foam. And I need to fix that into there. Now, I've got nothing on the back to fix it to, so I'm just going to go, because it's going to be um, up on foam pads, I'm going to use my foam pads to stick it. So I've got my Dollar Tree foam here and I'm just going to go behind the cat. Now, if you've got any hangover, you can trim it with the scissors. I'm going to have a look at that and I don't have any hangover. So I can just grab that piece now. I'm going to use my pickup tool and just go into that space. Just tease it where you want it. Just remember not to push anything down until you're ready. So right, I'm all over the place this morning. I'm going to have to pick it up because I can't see. So I'm getting that in there and across there. So that is now stuck down fast onto those two pads. And while I'm at it, just to even it out, I'm going to stick a few more pads on there. And if you've watched my videos in the past and seen me doing shakers, um, I have a tendency to shake before my glue is dry. So I'm absolutely not going to do that today. I'm just going to behave myself and just put it tentatively on top and then wait for it to dry. Right, so I've got all of my foam pads on the back. Now, the next thing is the eyes. Now, the eyes are a lovely almond shape, and you can decide which way around you want those points to go. So if I actually pick them up with my tool here, um, you'll be able to see what I mean. So you can go that kind of shape with your eyes, or if you reverse it, if I can pick that one up, You've kind of got your eyes going that way. So it's entirely up to you, but it will change the character of the face. One will look a little more mean, and one will look a, a little bit more kitty cat, if you know what I mean. So I'm kind of going to go with that. And where you position them is also important. The further apart you put the eyes, let's show you that again. See, you, you can start to create some really crazy expressions. You can even go like that. When you do that, it's quite owl-like. And I, I actually like that. 
I like it a little bit close together. So I'm just going to pick those up there. I can see which way I want them. And I'm just going to go in with my glue, make sure that it's still flowing. And I'm going to go there. And I'm going to go there. So I've got my two little beads of glue and hopefully I'm going to get my eyes on straight. So let's have a look at that. I think those are pretty even. So I'm going to go there and then I'm having my starry pupils rather than the, um, the oval ones that come with it. Because I just thought it would make it look nice. Now I've got dots of glue down there, which I hope you can see. And now I'm having stars for my eyes. I'm going to go just like that. I like that. So I think that pupil's come down a bit, hasn't it? So I'm just going to push that up a bit. And then once you, you decide where you want them, just get your finger and just press. And then you've made good contact with glue and paper. And I think I've got them correct. That one might be up a little bit higher. So I'm just manipulating, trying to get that star up there. See, I've just pushed it off. That's it. I'll live with it right there. So there's my starry little cat. I can get my white gel pen and uh, put a little dot there. In fact, I think I will do that. I'm just going to grab it. Right, so test your gel pen on your finger. The warmth of your body will make the ink flow. And then decide where exactly you want your little dot. I'm going to go there. And I'm also going to go there. So I've got my little dots in my eyes now. Now then, the collar. I'm pretty sure that the collar is supposed to fix onto the top of my pumpkin. So I'm just going to bring that right back in again and do it gently. And I'm also pressing to see how far along my glue has dried. And I'm just going to apply some here. Now you could of course have done um, the colour in lime green or purple. If you like your pink and orange Halloween, um, that's also another thing of course that would look really pretty. But I'm just going to pop that up onto my edge and then push it along with my fingernail and bring it back into camera. And I'm just going to go with that there. because I like that and then on the tummy of the cat now I need to apply some glue so I'm not sure that this goes directly to the edge so I'm just sticking within the shape of the pumpkin so I'm not going to mess anything up and then I'm going to pick my piece up very carefully and it is sort of like die cut down at the base so that you can see where it's supposed to go so I'm just pushing that around there and I'm pretty sure that that is it so I'm going to put that there And then I've got some glue and I want to get that glue out and my finger won't fit in. So I'm just grabbing a little piece of kitchen paper and just wipe it really quickly because you don't want your, uh, your kitchen towel to stick onto there. Now then, there is something that I've missed out that I've just noticed and that is my little cat's nose. And I'm looking around on my desk and I can't find it. So I'm just going to have to run off and cut one and I'll be right back. Right, so I went off and I cut a little nose and you can see that there and you can decide whichever way you want it, whether flat side up, point side or whichever way. I'm trying to make my cat's face a little bit more 
kind of sweet so I think I'm going to go with flat side down and I'm going to go like that now in an ideal world it would have whiskers but it doesn't and uh, you can if you want to draw some in so without knocking off anything that I've glued I'm just going to go for three three little ones and hopefully I'm getting them on straight so I've got my three little whiskers there and if I wanted to I can come down here more of a face so there that is my little kitty cat and I need to now pop it onto the base so holding my shaker piece on because you know what I'm like I'm just going to flip that over take off all the sticky pads that are on the back here turn it over hopefully everything is where it should be and I'm just going to pop that on and I hope I'm getting that on there straight so I'm going to go there so now I am committed now you can of course use one of the sentiments which I should have cut out that comes in the pack spooky would look really nice along there but that is what I have for you today all of these gorgeous gorgeous pumpkins and the card and the little beach hut done Halloween I hope you have an absolutely awesome day I'll be up with more chaos craft tomorrow and as usual all links below thanks so much for watching bye